Okay, this is a video to rehash and review what we learned in our webinar on creating a simple memory game that you can use uh, with your Promethean. So board. if you're going to create a memory game that you can play with your students for vocabulary or incentive or whatever the case may be, you're going to want to start with a grid like this. And to create a grid like this, we can go to a blank piece of paper. I'm going to go up here to my property browser and where it says grid visible, I'm going to hit true. So I have a nice grid here. And then I can take my connector tool or draw a straight line if I want. And I can start to create the grid using the, uh, start to create the grid for the memory game, using the grid here behind the image makes it really easy to be able to make sure my lines are straight, that there's the same amount of space between each one, and then I can just finish off the grid like this. When I'm done, I can shut off the grid and have my straight line. So it would look like this. Now, of course, I wouldn't want to do this over and over again. So in order to uh, save some work, you can go over to your resource browser and you can literally drag your grid into your resource browser. So then the next time you go to make a memory game, all you would need to do is drag it out again. Why reinvent the wheel twice? Once is enough. Okay, so now I have my grid that's done here. And now I'm going to st start to type in words. So I can type in words for my grid. So we're, this is going to be a matching game, and I have all of these uh, simple one-syllable uh, one words for the students to uncover. Again, I can go back to my property browser, turn on that grid. Now you see here, it's not going to work very well for me to line up my my words because the grid's behind the image. So all I have to do is where it says on top, false. I'm going to go to true and now the grid is on top of my image and it makes it perfectly easy to line these up where I want them. Let's see, let's put them all in the same spot. So now that they're all going to be in the same area, and you can make it neat. I love this tool for, for keeping things neat on a page. And once that's all I done, I can shut off the grid. And I have my perfect words for my memory game. So now I'm going to want to put some pictures on top of the words so that the students have something that they can click on to play the memory game. So I can search through my resources and grab some animals and I'm just going to take them, drag them out, and place them on top of my words. Of course you could use images that have to do with a specific unit, especially if you're doing vocabulary and such. And you can just resize these like that. So on the next page here, different animals, but I did complete my little uh, graph here. So now I have my images covering my words, but I still need to give them a job so that they disappear when the students click on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of the images. I'm going to go over to my action browser. I'm going to go to hidden because we want it to hide when the students click on it, but we also want it to come back when they click on it again. So I have my image selected. That's why all of this is visible. If I did not have an image selected, you see how it's all grayed out here. I'm going to select my image click on hidden and then over in the target area what do I want to hide when I click on the apple well I want the apple to hide though I could make it anything so I come over to my images I find my apple 
they're going to be placed on the page in the order that I put them on the page. So you kind of want to keep that in mind so you're not hunting all over the place for things. I hit OK and apply changes. And then when I go over to presentation mode in blue, you can see I'm in design mode here and you can see the orange box around the image letting me know that um, it has a job, whatever the job may be, but we know it's hidden. So I'm going to go to presentation mode. When I click on the apple, it's going to disappear and come back. And we want to do that for all of the shapes, all of the images there so that we can create a memory game. So here I've done that. I've gone through and I've given each one of these a job. So now the students, when I'm in presentation mode, can click on two pictures. That's not a match. They go back. Not a match. They can go back. And when they have a match, they can leave it like this until you've cleared the board. Great little game. Really easy. Could be spelling words. Could be vocabulary words. Um, and once you've created a template, you could leave all of this and just change the words. So it's a nice way, again, you could group this entire memory game, go over to your resources, find a folder to put it in, and drag the whole thing into your resources. Then you can pull that out anytime you want and have that game available to you. And you could just easily go through, let's ungroup it, easily go through and change the words. If you wanted to have an image behind your memory game so that when it's complete, the students would be able to see a picture, something that had to do with your unit, you can drag in a picture or copy and paste a picture in or take a picture using your desktop tools, whatever the case may be, and we can lighten it up. So I'm going to select it, go over here to my little sun and lighten it up and then I can build my grid right on top of the picture. So again I can go to visible, true, no, I was using red this time, and I can go through and finish making my grid this way. And then it's the same idea that you could put the pictures in the in the words right on top of it. So all I did there was put an image behind the grid. Okay, during the webinar someone had mentioned what would happen if I took an image and wanted to put some words on top of the image and when the students click on it the both the image and the words would disappear because right now even if I group these together and I go over to my action browser click on hidden and look at my targets if I were to just choose the rabbit even though they're grouped together, when I go to presentation mode, mm, I forgot to hit, I'm sorry, I forgot to hit apply changes. Gotta love that. Okay, so you can see here if I click on the rabbit, even though these are grouped together, the words are going to stay there. And that really isn't going to look good if you have it over here and you click on it and the words would stay. So what I used to do is I would go over to the camera tool, take a snapshot of both the picture and the words and then I would I would create the hidden out of the image. So that when I had it like this they would both disappear. 
but thanks to Clarissa I found that there is an easier way to do that so if I had if I wanted to have the words click here on top of the squirrel I could group these two things together make an invisible box around the two and then as I click on the squirrel I'm gonna go over to hidden what do I want to hide when I click on that well I want the words click here and squirrel to disappear at the same time so you see here the groupings there's actually an image that shows this is the second thing that we group together and I hit OK and apply changes and now when I'm in presentation mode and I click on it both the words and the picture are going to disappear at once so you don't have to go through the extra step of taking a picture of it and using that image instead you can just go for that grouping and again I thought that was wonderful I hadn't seen that before so when you if I click on this oops if I click on this and I remove the existing and go back I can click on this go to hidden and then find the groupings this is the first grouping we did of the rabbit and the uh, click here this is the second one we did with the squirrel and the click here I apply the changes and now they both disappear at once so just a little added uh, thought that came from asking questions during the webinar and thanks to Clarissa she went home or she was home I should say she practiced afterwards and uh, got back to me on an, on an answer an easier way to do it so thank you Clarissa